It's difficult to imagine, looking at Kingswear today, how the port must have been affected by uh, the bombing in World War II, which happened primarily in Dartmouth and also up uh, the line here at the uh, Phillips Shipbuilders, which is up around the corner of that, uh, those trees there, where my uncle, um, my dad's brother, was killed. So you were here during the war then? Yeah, Dad. I was here during the war, and the war broke out after the big regatta at Dartmouth. What on the on the uh, that the king and queen and the princesses had come to when they first when the princess first met the duke when he uh -huh. was a, he was a prince Greek prince of the college, and they, he and she met him up there. And uh, they were in here for the uh, all the regatta, Dartmouth regatta, and of course on the Sunday morning they disappeared because the war broke out, and uh, everything was different here, and uh, they put a uh, various things happened with the navy and that uh, they put laid mines off the entrance to the river, and they they put a boom across the. Uh, Dartmouth Harbour from from Kingsborough side to Dartmouth side. What was that made of? That was made at that time out of wooden bulks of timber, like like um, railway sleepers all jammed right. together with a cha in a chain with bits right. of chain in between, so they floated up yeah. there. So, what other changes did you notice here? Well, but the the light like, uh, Mill Bay was. Uh, and all the beaches out there were all, well, not at that time, no, they weren't. They, they, they were barbed wired off after, but, the, but of course, that was when the invasion scare came in. I've got a bit ahead of myself. Ah, you sometimes uh, do that, don't you? Yeah, I just sometimes do that. Uh, well, the Navy arrived here and, and all the reserves of the territorials went away on the train and, uh, and, uh, Various things like that, and the harbour was altered with with the navy ships that came here, and uh, of course, as it went on, various big houses in the village were taken over by the navy, and the wrens when the wrens was formed, and uh, then, after France fell, all the the beaches were were mined and uh, they, except Lodos Beach which uh, which we still used as children then and uh, then after that when Dunkirk after Dunkirk the mew the mew in the boats in the river the small boats went to Dunkirk but the new mew never went right across because she was uh, considered um, too deep to go over the mew was the ferry boat. The ferry boat, the railway ferry boat. But she unloaded the big ships at uh, Dover. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, then, of course, uh, as I said, the wrens came here. All the big houses were taken over. And then after Dunkirk, of course, the Belgians arrived here. Right. Uh, with loads and loads of, well, must have been about 20 Belgian trawlers. And... Uh, they moored up off, off uh, Sankey. And uh, when the actual troops left Dunkirk, they asked them for volunteers to go over and pick them up. And I think there was about, uh, about enough to crew about three boats out of all the lot went over, the others wouldn't go. Mm. And then after that, of course, the French started to arrive here. The first in was was um, two French tugs, the Aube and the Azaire, who were here all through the war. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, sometime later on, um, sometime later on, uh, what were they? Uh, there, there were there were various lots of foreigners that came here, uh, Nor Norwegian and uh, and uh, various. Lots of foreigners came here, and uh, man ships and uh, went yeah. in and out. But we, you didn't know what was doing much because it was 
all taken over. Uh, and uh, the Royal Dart Hotel was taken over by the Navy and became HMS Dartmouth II. And then some 12 months after, it became HMS Dartmouth, HMS Sakala, sorry, mm -hmm. after that. And uh, that ran the motor torpedo boats in that, and the fleet that was in the river, which we, after the war, found out, were going over to occupied France in Brittany and picking up the um, down pilots because we could build plenty of planes, but we didn't couldn't train the pilots in quick enough succession to ban the planes. So what was the story about uh, the Royal Dart Hotel being sunk? Ah, what, uh, Lord Toho gave out on the German radio, which we all used to listen to, uh, because quite often it was funny, and he was called Lord Ho Ho. <laughs> yeah. uh, William Joyce it was his name, but he was called Lord Ho Ho and by us, and we used to listen, and one night we heard uh, Dartmouth had been bombed, and uh, a ship was sunk, and uh, HMS Sakala was, was bombed and completely sunk. Well, we all had a good laugh because we knew it was the Dart Hotel, and actually that day, or just before that day, a big airplane had been flying up and down the river, which since then they found was taking photographs of the river and uh, a little spitfire came and and uh, had, had several goes of it. The policeman said to us children that were going back to school after dinner, you go in the Dart Hotel and shelter in there because there's a fight and there's bullets flying mm -hmm. around, machine gun bullets flying around. And uh, we went in there and uh, when we were in there, the, the big plane, which I think was a Junkers 88, I don't know, made off. The Spitfire flew it and had several goals. And the last time it went underneath to have a go underneath. But the trouble was the, the other plane had a belly machine gun and it shot down the Spitfire. And the mm -hmm. Spitfire came down just outside the river and a boat went out and picked up the pilot who was okay and took him in the mm. hospital. Mm. But he, he wasn't injured. And uh, many years, 20 years or so after the war, they found the engine of the Spitfire in the troll. Like the so what bomb. do you remember oh, that's it. about the bombing here then? What can I remember about the bombing? And what There's happened? Several lots of bombing. Several lots of bombing. The first bombing was at the shipyard up there. Uh, in 1942, I forget the date. I forget the date. Right. And uh, two, four cockerels came down through from Brixham, dropped bombs on the uh, on the shipyard, and dropped a bomb on the college, and dropped a bomb somewhere else. But I forget where that was. And then they machine gunned the shipyard. And uh, there was quite a lot of damage done because they were building um, fleet uh, patrol vessels and, and um, what they call the other things, a bit, bit smaller than destroyers they were building up there. And uh, building defense boats and that. And um, there, were, there were about 20 killed up there. My, brother between my next brother up, the three of us, the two brothers worked up there. Uh, he was an electrician and he was working in the um, Plater's Loft, which he shouldn't have been that day. He was somebody had gone sick and uh, of course he, he was killed up there. And my other brother found his remains of his body. He was uh, 17. That was in 1942. And there were quite a lot, uh, no, I think there were 20, somewhere about 20 killed up there. And uh, last year, the memorial was properly put in place and they made a big do, a very 
because it's changed hands. Instead of being a shipyard, it's now a, it's been various things, and it's now a, a, a marina, and uh, it's not the same management. And they've been very good. They've, they've they had a good do up there, and it was on uh, television, and and I was on the uh, radio. Okay. Talking so what, what what about the other bombing here then? The, bomb, the first bomb that dropped was on a little cottage miles away from anywhere. At um, up at the farm, right, and uh, the lady was buried in there, and her husband got out, and the doctor happened to be going up the road, and she was got out in no time, but she had a broken arm and that. She was taken to hospital at Brixham, and uh, a couple of days later, Roy Cannon, who worked in the garage, was sent to take her to the cricket pavilion in Kingdwear. You know where that is. Yeah. The a fountain violet. Fountain violet. Which, which is really de completely derelict now. And she was put in there and her husband to live in there. And uh, when she came down the road, Roy was going to take her straight to the prick villain along by Dragon House. Right. But she said, stopped him. She said, where are you taking me, Roy? I'm taking you to the cricket room. I don't want to go this way. I want to go past my house. I want to see what that so-and-so Hitler has done to my house. Ah. Yeah. So and what about the bombs that dropped out here then? The bombs that dropped out here, there was a, there was a bomb that dropped um, just out in the mud now, which is, the mud was closer in in those days because they've added that bit of key there. Just the exactly did the bombs drop then, Dad? Well, look at here, you see the footbridge? Yeah. Down where that blue boat is with the flag, that is where a bomb dropped. What, the small the blue boat there? Huh? That small blue boat? That small blue, blue posh boat. Right. First word of the On the embankment there. Yeah. That was the embankment. The, from here, from the footbridge along, there was only a footpath. About as wide as the tarmac. Right. There. And, and that, that, that bomb dropped on the. Back right. Back. Where Another else? Another bomb dropped a bit further out in the mud. You could only see it when uh, when the tide was out. Right. Of course, none of that jetty was there at the time. Right. Uh, the other the other three dropped. One up on the in the garden at the chalet at Churchill. One on the garage of the chalet and ruined Mr. Fisher's Mr. Nichols's car, who was a science master at the college, yeah. and uh, blew it across into the keep, and the other one landed out at Brook Hill, knocked the limb off of a big tree, a big pine tree, but didn't explode, just, just right. before you get to Brook Hill House. So they had to recover that? So they had to recover that, that had to be recovered in... Then, so what about the bombing in Dartmouth then? The bombing in Dartmouth. Well, one Saturday morning when I was about 15, I was in the civil defence and I had passed the the uh, Red Cross exam and uh, they wanted an extra one in the rescue party, so I joined the rescue party at, at, at 15, 16, just turning. And uh, well, I was over here one Saturday morning about 11 o'clock and a plane came over and dropped a bomb in, in Duke Street on the near the bank and another one next to the school that you were in on what was a pub then it is now Council Flats over there and they dropped the bomb there and uh, we had to go, we had to go over we had an ambulance we went over the ambulance, ambulance and uh, we were over there for two days. So you were f only 15 yeah, years I, I old when you... 15, you turn in, it was 15 coming up to 16. And my brother had been killed the year before, but uh, my mother allowed me to go, and that was it. Uh, the bomb dropped on the, on the pub near the school. The plane must have been going upriver because the bomb came... The bomb that um, hit Duke Street came through a person that I worked with's kitchen by Hawke's removal shop there, that, but there was a 
there was a bank then, what was it called, um, National Provincial Bank, came through there and into the shop next to the bank, which was an ironmonger's, demolished the, the bank and the ironmonger's and the shop next to it, which was Rod Prins, which was a draper's and ladies' clothes and all sorts of stuff like that. And Mrs. Rod Prins was there when later on, or there at the time, and she wasn't injured. But there was a couple of there was a girl killed under the counter, and there was another one down in under the counter that the counter had protected. This and is on the, the bank or the drapers. This is in the, this is in Rod Prins in the drapers. And um, we King's Rights were directed to Rod Prins. So uh, I had just been in the co-op and brought some some broken up sweets that Mr. Bishop had let me had me Mr. Bishop had let me have cheap. And uh, I was passing down these sweets to the girl that was still living. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, uh, we got her out of there. This was 11 o'clock in the morning. We must have got her out of there by about just after lunch. And uh, we, it was in a hell of a sight there. There was a naval officers around. There was a naval commander, doctor there. He was taking brandy round. And it, I was quite surprised that he was giving brandy to people that had been injured, but it seemed to do him good. And uh, anyway, we were there all day, and then the next day, the Sunday, we were there until about um, half past four. And uh, we left the ambulance that we had, that the Kings had just been given, over by Castle Hotel, and we went in there, and I saw the the manager, the Mr. Pook, Mrs. Pook at Dartmouth, whose medals, whose friends' medals. I was involved in getting put in Kingsborough trust room because Mr. Selway, that was a Kingsborough man, and uh, I, I. Her father was killed in the bank. Yeah, Mr. Mr. What would he call Chilla? What was it? She called Mrs. Puck, who had a big clothing shop in Fairfax Place. Right. And uh, we dug him out in, in uh, the bank on the Sunday morning, and his watch was still going. And that was the first bodies that I'd, I'd seen one body in the river before, but that was the first bodies I'd ever seen. But there was no there was no, uh, n nobody made any fuss and said you mustn't see this and you mustn't see that. So I what was, did you want to say about the ambulance? Well, the biggest fuss there was for several days and, and a couple of weeks was that there was five miles on the ambulance clock, uh, speedometer that wasn't accounted for with us going across the Dartmouth and back again. And, it went on and on, there was inquiry about this, and in the end we think that somebody had borrowed it to go up the college and take somebody up to the college uh, hospital. Uh -huh. But we never got so to the So tell that, me about that, the, that, our defences then. Was it, did we have any? Very little defences. But after the bombing, uh, 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 an anti-aircraft gun was put in uh, Coronation Park, one in the field above Nass, one in the field above Hu Down, and a couple of machine guns on the little place, the little on the little path place down the side of the uh, railway line, and uh, and and some guns down in uh, South Down. Did they see action? They, I I don't think they ever saw much action. But uh, because there was very little after that, but of course then the the uh, MTBs were here, moored down through the river. What's MTBs? Motor torpedo boats. Right. And some of them were damaged when they bombed Nos, because they they also sank a collier there and several cranes and and hulks that used to do the coaling for the river. But they, they got the collier up, 
and uh, repaired it and it went back into coaling again. Did you say to me that the bombing was sometimes planes coming back from Bristol or Plymouth? Oh, that was before. We No, that was before that. We, the first planes that we used to see when I was started in the civil defence, if I was up at the top where Mount Pleasant Flats is now, in the, in the night, you'd see pl the planes going over to Plymouth and, and bombing Plymouth and coming back. And we saw the big flash when the gas works at Plymouth blew up from up there. Hmm. Yeah. But then, of course, they did all sorts of things. They, they, they down here below us, the, where the footbridge, there was a barricade across the road, and then, uh, and then they dug holes in the road and they put explosives in there so that they could blow the road up. That was really before when the uh, when the threat of invasion was about, and uh, they had a, and and they had a. Um, a barricade down by the ferry in that. Mm. But uh, whether they'd have stopped anybody going by, I don't know, because I would thought to myself, if I'd been coming from the ferry direction with a vehicle, I would have gone up through the station and you could have gone up through mm. the low road. But there were barricades up at Hill Ed, weren't there? Just by Crofton's Farm. So what about your yeah, schooling then, there. when you came here? Well, what happened then? I was about... Uh, five or so I suppose, six, coming up to six and I went to Kingsborough school and the headmistress was Miss Hayward. The next one down was Miss Davis who travelled down from painting by train every day and the other one was Miss Laurie. It was very, Kingsborough school was very good, very good. Miss, Miss Hayward impressed on us that good poetry was good and we, t we learned all good poetry and I still remember things now that uh, I was taught there, and people were quite amazed at some of the poetry that uh, we learned in a, in a in an infant school, junior school, I suppose you'd call it, would you? Because the in boys the, and girls playgrounds then were split, weren't they? The boys and girls playgrounds. Were I split. remember that. The little the little children, the infants played in the girls' playground, and there was a wall across yeah. there, and uh, and. Uh, between the boys and the girls, and there was a flagpole there, and on Empire Day and important days, we the flag would go up and we'd all have to go out there and salute the flag. So then you went over to Dartmouth? And then I went over to Dartmouth in 1930, September 38, I suppose, and went to uh, the school up the road, the, the uh, senior school. And, but that was just boys, wasn't it? That was all boys at that time. That was all boys, yeah. And, uh, of course, the rugby field was up the top where the school is now. Mm. But and we used to go up through the gardens to the rugby field and cricket field and that. I used to keep out the way of the cricket ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how long were you there for and what did you do there? I was there... Of course, in, in the, 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 before I got there, after the holidays of the first year, the war broke out in 1939. And uh, just, after, just at the time of the big regatta, the under regatta, I think they said it was, because the Queen was here, the, ki the King and the Queen, I should say, in those days were here, and the princesses. And that, on the... On the Queen Victoria's old yacht, which was called the Victoria and Albert, which was a lovely old steam yacht. And uh, that is when they say she met the Duke of Edinburgh, who was the Prince of Greece at the time. And uh, of course, the regatta finished on the, on the Friday night, and on the Sunday morning, the, the Saturday night, and on the Sunday morning, the war broke out. So all the, the destroyer, the depot, the ship that was the guard ship for her, and uh, her yacht was gone the next day, and uh, that was that. And when we we caught the ferry over at eight, the Mew, that was then the railway ferry, I think it was the Mew, the Mew, 
and which we went round to time. We caught the ferry back at lunchtime, walked down the road in the, in the, for lunchtime, and came home to Kingsborough to lunch, back after lunch, and uh, up to the school again until 4.30. How did you get to the school? Walk or...? Walk up, walk up near the school. Walk up near the school. Well, it must have taken you... How long? 20 well, minutes to walk up there? a quarter of an hour to walk up there. But the ferry ran the time, that ferry. Mm. And uh, one, one day when we were going back to school, the, about four of us, four or half a dozen of us, down the square, a big plane came flying down through the river. And we didn't know what it was. It was a German plane. And it turns out afterwards, it's the one that photographed the river and all the, the stuff on the river. And uh, she came down through, and after she'd flown up and down a couple of times, a spitfire came after her. And you could hear rat tat 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 And the policeman, Mr. Martin, made us all go in the dark. It's the first time I'd ever been in the pub. And, uh, and uh, it, this plane flew around, and the Spitfire made the mistake of going under it and was shot down by the, the belly machine gun and landed out in the sea. And uh, a couple of hours later, hour and a half later, they brought the pilot in. He was okay, he parachuted out of the Muson. And, uh, so what other infrastructure went into safe. Dartmouth to support the war then, Dad? Well, in about 1942, I should think, hundreds of lorries came up from Tor Quarry with loads and loads of material to make into concrete. They dug out up the road all the way through Duke Street and concreted the road solid all the way down through Duke Street through the Avenue Gardens, just missing the bandstand, and across to the embankment. And they built, oh, about half a dozen slipways out into the river. This was for the landing craft, that, when the town, when the dark became a landing craft base. And uh, then they took over Coronation Park, and the whole of Coronation Park was covered with slabs, huts built on there, and that was the American base. And of course, the cadets had gone from the college to uh, 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 to be evacuated. Cheshire, I think there's Chester, Chester. And the Americans took the college over. So there were hundreds and hundreds of Americans here. And all their landing craft, all their massive LCTs and that. And uh, they used to come in and do practices and that. What did they used to say about Americans? Overpaid? That, yes, that's quite right. What is it? Overpaid, over... over -sexed. Taxed and over here. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And they, of course they were landing, they were going out from here and landing on the beach at Slapton, which had all, all the civilians had been evacuated from Stoke Fleming to all sands for an eight mile depth in. Black Horton and all was all. Well, people who owned houses there, they were evacuated. All evacuated. And, and uh, the landing craft used to go out there and land on the beach from here. And uh, of course, one night, as you know, uh, they, they didn't go straight out from here to slap them. They used to go out in their own line bay in a to make it a long trip. And uh, one night they got out in Lion Bay and uh, they were only protected by a, a couple of old destroyers or, or corvettes. And uh, the Germans had got to know and e-boats got amongst them and they sunk quite a lot of landing craft, about six or seven, and, and uh, or maybe more damaged a lot. And there was, over 700 Americans killed that night. And through that, when they had, when they did D-Day, at the same time as D-Day, they were going to have a landing down the south of France. But that landing had to be cancelled because they'd lost so many of the big... So what are your memories of the lead up to D-Day and the day itself? 
the town was full of Americans. Oh, the woods up by the uh, up by the uh, kennels was full of Americans. Everywhere was full of Americans, with 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 dumps of food and and K rations and all sorts of stuff. Everywhere, and uh, this was prior to D Day because we didn't know when D Day was going to be. All these land craft were near, and then all of a sudden. Just before the uh, six, must have been about the fourth or the fifth, because they've got to get time to get over there, get in the right place to go over there. The fourth or fifth. All of a sudden, we got up one morning and the harbour was empty, and there, all the Americans were gone. It's one or two still up um, at the college and on the slipways. And so how they had built various was... things they had. They, we, we had come out afterwards, they had built various, various things. They built a big hospital up by Stoke Gabriel on, on our side of the river for, for injuries. And, uh, and a German prisoner of war camp up at uh, Gampton. So what, I mean, you, I thought you said to me you could virtually walk across the well, river. Well, you could have been before the... Before they went, you could merely walk across the river on craft. Hundreds and hundreds of craft in the river, full of craft. Mm. Of course, all the MTBs and MLs, and that's motor launches, motor torpedo boats, MGBs, motor gun boats, hundreds of them here. Mm. And, and the place became could, uh, very quiet after. Couldn't you hear them all leaving then? No, not really, no. Well, there had been so much action at various times that you, 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 we didn't really know what was happening, were we? And I mean, there was a, there were to, just to give you an instance, the secret fleet here that which was motor gun boats, motor torpedo boats, and uh, and uh, MLs was here, had been going across to France, picking up the down pilots. In, in down in Brittany, all through the war, we never knew that, and it comes out after that after the war, that they were all brought into here, they and they were put on the on the station, uh, dropped at the pontoon, put on the train, locked in a compartment, and straight up to London. That was the uh, the down pilots and the SOE. That's the, that's the spies and that that were sent mm -hmm. over to France. They went. They were taken over. And 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 they, they were came down on the train, and got on the MTBs or MLs. And we knew nothing whatsoever about it. We knew nothing about that at all whatsoever. And when they made the film on it, they, and they interviewed us, and they said, "Well, you were here. You must have known what was going on." And we didn't. We knew nothing whatsoever about it. It was all kept quiet. Then they used to say, keep mum or something. Yeah. Be like Dad, keep mum. So when did you move to Kingswear, Dad? I think it was about 1933, when I was probably about five or six. Ah. So why did you come here? Uh, my father was moved here by the railway. We had lived at Weymouth. Right. And what was he doing on the railway? He was a bus driver ah. on railway buses, which people wouldn't know about now, would they? No. And where did he? Where was he working? At the railway station? Where was he? Where, where was he working? Uh, from Dartmouth. All right. From Dartmouth uh, on what became the Western National. They, the GWR had closed down their buses at various depots. We had moved from Wantage, where I was born, to uh, Weymouth. And uh, then Weymouth closed down and became Western National. This, and then he was transferred down to Dartmouth. So how do you think the, the street with all the shops and everything here has changed since you moved here? Oh, tremendously. There were all sorts of little shops all the way down through the village, Hawks, uh, 
grocery shop, the dairy. Next to the dairy was a fish and chip shop. Next to that, a bit further along, was some lock-up garages. And then after the lock-up garages, the co-op, which was Sam's restaurant. And next to that, uh, an empty space. And then the butcher shop. Yeah. Next to the butcher shop, Mr. Posen's dairy. Next to Mr. Posen's dairy, Miss Delisle Sodies. Uh, Miss Delisle Sodies haberdasher shop. Right. I had a bit of a job to get that out. <laughs> haberdasher shop. And then a, a Sunday paper shop that Bill Calland and uh, various people had run the Sunday papers from. And then a bit further down the road, the steam packet right. pub. And uh, next to that, Mr. Hunt's gentleman's outfitter. Mainly he sold boots and shoes, but if you ordered, uh, if people ordered a suit, he would get a suit for them. And then a bit further down was Miss Taylor, whose husband ran a farm up the, up at, uh, West, up above Westerland, Mr. Taylor's. And Mrs. Taylor ran a little shop there where she sold sweets and stuff like that. And then next to her, Stanix the baker's shop, where you could get all your bread, pasties and stuff like that. Uh, next to them in the square, where the toilets are now, was another grocer's shop, which closed just as we got here, and it had belonged to somebody called Thrussell. Right. And then after that, Mr. Hill, Charlie Hill, the, the tobacconist who sold sweets and all sorts of stuff, I also cut the hair, and besides that, he did the village post round and, uh, and uh, delivered the telegrams and things like that, all the way around the... So where was the... and the post office was on the corner? The post office wasn't on the corner at all. That was... yes, sorry, the post... Next to him was the post office which was on the corner. Yep, and, and it was Mrs. Wellington. And now there are only, what, three shops in now the village? Now there's three shops in the village, yep. Mm.